Hey, welcome to another episode of Mailbag. And as I said, in each of these episodes, when I get stuff in, whether it's posted to me, um, whether I buy it, whether it comes through the mail or whether I purchase from a shop. I share the unboxing with you and nothing is different to today. I went into the local store and I got the final module that I've been waiting for from Behringer System 100. These have been in the store probably since before Christmas, but I uh, just didn't get a chance to pick this up. This is the System 100 110, which is the VCO, VCF, VCA, or synth in a module, if you like to call it that, because that's pretty much all you need for a single voice synth. Um, obviously, the only thing that it doesn't have is an envelope generator, but, it may, it may do, but as far as I know, it doesn't. Let's open it up and get closer to the... Oh, and we don't have a light on. There we go. It's better. As always, we get a nice little power cable. With the Behringer ones, they're, they're not that long. So, but long enough. Long enough. I've seen longer. And some people have commented before that they need to be longer. Um, the notorious black screws and definitely the right user guide here by cutting into this because there's a big piece of tape I find it easier to get into these bags All right let's pull it out do, 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 do. there it is take the little thing off what do we got this looks very sexy indeed i love this gray color i really do i know it's similar to what Roland use so it's kind of along that lines but yeah we have got I've got to tilt it this way a little bit so I can read it too guys so standard VCO similar very similar to what the other one the dual VCO is so you've got pulse width VCO waveforms are the same tuning pitch range two modulation sources that's actually pretty cool it's got two all right so VCF is the same and VCA is Pretty much similar. I'm, what I'm saying are the same is I've got the dual modules, like the, the 112 is the dual VCO, the 121 I think it is, is the dual VCF, and the 130 is the dual VCA. So yeah, they look pretty much similar. So this is actually probably going to be very, very useful. Now just looking on the back, for those playing along at home, you guys can see that they're just under the bearing and logo revision D. And we've got some tuning pots if we need to. But yeah, this is actually quite an action-packed module and um, it feels very sturdy, just like they all do. Anyway, um, the benefit of this, I guess, is that we don't have to, you know, if we just want to quickly produce a, a synth voice, this is all in one module. I actually like this idea. I really, really like this idea. And I just wanted to check one more thing. They've got this arrow that goes from the VCO out into the uh, VCF which I'm finding actually really interesting. And I'm also seeing that there's also VCF into this. Now, what this is kind of telling me is maybe these are internally wired, so I don't actually have to patch from here to here. That may be the case. So let's just have a look at that. It says number two, VCO out, send the VCO signal to another source. Yeah, look, I can't actually see anything written in the manual about that, but let's Let's go check it out in the rack anyway, and we will definitely find that out. Okay, I also got another module today as well um, as the 110, which I just showed, um, and that is this one. Uh, now, this one belongs to the uh, 2500 ARP series, uh, and this is the dual envelope generator module called the 1033. Now, this is very, very similar to the 1003 that I've got before. And I was actually kind of wondering what the difference between the two are. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna need it, but I thought I'd get it anyway, because um, it's so inexpensive, these modules. So, so, so inexpensive. Um, and yeah, I just love filling up my UI rack with cool things. Now, I'm definitely gonna be checking out that little user guide as well. And once again, we shall destroy the bag. Okay. In. There it is there. 
dual envelope generator module. And the, I guess the difference between this and the 1003 is that set of knobs at the top, the gate delay. Everything else looks pretty similar. So um, in the manual, it does have this arrow pointing to the gate delay. It delays the envelope cycle for up to three seconds from initial to from the initial gate input. So you'll get a little indicator like there. So minimum, I guess, would be zero and maximum would be up to three seconds, which is actually pretty, pretty handy. And um, attack time, initial decay time, sustain, final decay. Now trigger mode, which is this little switch here, I guess. Number seven. Trigger mode selects between single mode where only one, only the gate signal controls the envelope or multiple mode where it, which uses a positive trigger pulse to re-trigger the envelope while a gate signal is present. So that's kind of like a cycling and okay, cyclic envelope. That's cool. And you can send a trigger in. I like that. That is actually really cool. This is going to be a pretty cool module, I reckon. I think the other one does that as well, but yeah, I like envelopes that can be re-triggered. All right, we should go check this one out as well. Okay, here it is in the rack. The Behringer 110. It's a synth in a module. Um, yeah, so basically what we're going to have to do with this is we're going to have to give this uh, some pitch and we're going to have to give this a gate. And what we're going to, I'm going to use is the MS101 for that. And so we'll go pitch into here. And then we'll go gate into there. And we're going to output high output there. I'm going to set up an envelope which is just sustain and everything else down. So it's just. Okay, now we want to. There we go. All right, so that's. There's the different waveforms. So let's have a listen to that filter to see if it's any different to the other one. Quite a nice sounding filter as normal as I'd expect. All right, let's try a bit of envelope into this. So we're going to use the 1033 and we're going to set this up with, now this module has a gate delay up the top and that's what's different to the module next to it. Didn't probably really need this, but there's actually a couple of cool things that the gate delay will do for us. So um, yeah, anyway. Let's give this some sustain. Okay, now, um, what I want to do is give it a bit of release. Let's see how long the release is on this. It's really hard for me to get out of the way with the camera. Uh, dearie me. Okay, and then what's the attack like on this? We'll do a full attack. Is that not working at all? Ah, we need to make, that's where the mistake was, all right. Ooh, 
Oh, did you notice that? There was a little, a little sort of thud when that attack got to the top. Let's try that again. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Let's see if the other envelope does that. Have like that. Here we go. Yeah, that kind of did it as well. Interesting. I wonder if the if that's a characteristics of the 2500 or if that's a characteristics of Beringer. Let's try the envelope module next to it, see if that does it. Yeah, that did it too. Interesting. Well, there's a characteristic. They, you can tell they're all the same circuits. So in interesting. Wouldn't mind actually getting that up on the uh, on the oscilloscope. All right, let's go back to the Behringer module. A couple of things I should have mentioned is the VCO automatically is wired in to the VCF, and the VCF is automatically wired in. See these lines across here. So you don't need to patch one to the other, which is actually really, really nice. And what it does is it frees up your patch cables for doing other stuff. One of the things I really like about that, um, other than that, it's pretty much a standard module. I always love doing this with a bit of delay. Almost just listening there. All right, let's have a listen to Pulse Width. take off the attack and a bit of the release all right now what we're going to do is we are going to see if we can automate that Okay, so what I read in the manual is this has zero to three minute, sorry, three seconds, did I say three minutes? Okay, so that is actually working. Now, what is actually interesting here, we could, I wanna try a little trick here. I just wonder if that fires the gate twice. Let's try this. Oh, yes, okay. Right, what I'm, going to do, I'm going to actually show you what I did, but we don't, 
we probably don't want really much release. We probably want to have the same, no attack. So that one's got a gate delay and that one doesn't and they're pretty much the same. So if I press a note, you can hear the second gate kicking in. It doesn't sound that great with the VCA. Why don't we try it with the VCF? So it is working on the VCF. So I've got the black cable going in and the blue cable is coming out of the Okay, so the left-hand side is the delayed gate with the blue cable coming out. So it says out L plus. The right-hand side is the black cable and that's firing first. And so we're going into both. And I've just sort of backed off the, just the attenuation on that gate on um, the cutoff. Both of those are cut off, by the way. So when we fire a note, we're getting a second trigger on that envelope, which is actually pretty cool. So, I mean, there's a million different ways you can use this, um, but that's just an example of how that gate, gated envelope works. Um, now, single and multiple, single is a single, it, you know, it cycles through the ADSR and then stops. Multiple means it is happy to take a trigger. So I can use like an LFO as a trigger and I can have these firing off. Hmm, a bit more study with that one, trying to get some interesting effects. Anyway, that is both those modules kind of all at once, the 110 and the 1033 together. Now they are different, obviously one's a 2500 and one's a System 100 clone. Um, but yeah, I think I'm actually probably happier with this one. I think it's actually a really, really useful module. And now it means that I've got a dual VCO and a single VCO, so that's three VCOs. So that's pretty, pretty thick voicing on the System 100 now. Um, pretty complete, as you can see there, pretty complete. Um, I think, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I'm not sure how I'm going to um, set up the 2500 yet. I don't think it'll stay where it is. By the way, that black module, you can see with the light flickering, is actually a frequency central envelope gener generator. It's a single envelope generator, um, but it is actually a system X, which means it's it's re replicated a system 100 so that belongs in there i guess the other module that i could put in this case may be the Metel the intelligent metropolis because that actually is a 185 sequencer it's modeled after the famous 185 sequencer i'll put a graphic up of the original roland system 100m 185 sequencer so there's this there's the 185 Metropolis, and yeah, um, I could probably fit that back in that rack. Probably top right, bottom right. There is the sequencer module already in there, but um, yeah, I'm not really sure where that's going to go. I have got a quad quantizer coming, which is by ADAC Systems, and um, looking forward to that as well. So that will kind of fix up some of the, the weirdish parts of that um, sequencer that's down the bottom there. Yeah, but yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to now, now this is all complete to banging out some tunes on this. And uh, I already got a nice little patch going. I'll just play it for you where I've made a little bubble sound. You'll like this.
had a bit of delay. Okay, this nine's come in and uh, yeah. I did talk about this. I do think I know what this is. Um, I'm pretty sure, if I'm right, this is the little adapter that I wanted to get for the wireless go. Actually, you might get the wireless go here. While we're at it, this is the wireless go that I'm talking about. So let's see. Aha, yes it is. Nothing else in the bag. Right, throw that away. So yeah, this is the VXLR Plus from Rode. Now let's um let's zoom in. I think that's so slow that zoom on that thing. There we go. The VXLR Plus, it's a special bit of circuitry in here. I don't know if it says anything on the back here. Yeah, so we are gonna need, so at the moment I'm just using a standard stereo. 3.5 millimeter connector and it's probably going to be just the same but this is what Rode recommend to use with this if you're going actually into a mixer so we're going to need to use a proper XLR uh, cable so we'll get that out and we'll open this up these are actually hard to come by um, they didn't have any stock anywhere that I looked. So it was a special order, I guess. Um, if it's tight in that bag, we might have to destroy. Oh no, here it comes. So that's what it looks like. It's got a little belt clip on it too, if you, you need to actually use it. So that to that. Right, so I guess what we're gonna need is a, is that little wireless go cable that they brought us that they gave us with the wireless go. So let's grab that. All right, so here's the little pouch. And in it should be that little cable. Yeah, there it is. All right, so we'll grab that out. And it's good that you keep everything. You should never throw things like this out. Especially these branded ones, they're kind of always, look at the road symbol on it, they always look cooler. Anyway, so um, God knows which way around this goes. I don't think it really matters. So bang in there and we take this one out and that will go in there so this is actually now the correct gear that they want you to use and now I can actually use a proper balanced XLR cable to plug into the mic port on my audio interface so this is going to be interesting to do this while we're filming but you never know, it might work. I'm pretty sure that plugs into there. Beautiful. Hold it down for three seconds. And we should have sound now, which we do. I'm just going to pop that on me. So you can see me talking in it. Now let me just turn the other mic on. We should hear me talking now in this one. Now, just double check to make sure we've got the right dB setting. That's the quiet one. That's the loud one there. Okay, cool. Now we're cooking with gas. Right. That's even a bit too loud. How's that going in through the interface now? That actually has really improved. That has really, really improved the quality of the sound um, through this. So I'm just running this without the uh, lapel. Lapel sitting here, all tangled up at the moment. There we go. There's the lapel. Um, I found a lapel the other day a little bit, a bit. I don't know. It's probably not the best quality. Of I've got a hundred. I'm not a hundred, but I've got about five or six different lapels. Um, and I found this one to be pretty responsive. So yeah, actually, I'm quite happy with this sound so let's go back to our little setup here that was a good little experiment and um just so you guys know who if you're watching this that was done live so i didn't you know rehearse this or edit this or anything like that it's my first reaction to this sort of stuff so that's the whole purpose of these mailbags is to is to get the first initial 
real look at something and how it works. So we plugged in for the first time with you at the same time with me, warts and all, and uh, let us know what you think of these little segments. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go head off to the next parcel. Okay, well, we might as well keep the wireless go on for the next parcel. Um, I'm actually quite happy with this. It's probably not really sitting in the right spot, but anyway. The next one I got in, I've already opened it because it had a terrible package, but um, now this isn't really synth related, but it is related for us YouTubers. And I know there's a, quite a lot of you guys who watch my channel and you're also YouTubers and you like to use cameras and stuff. Now, when I did my um, studio camera rig setup sort of stream a few months ago, I talked about these small rig clamps and I've ordered another one. I just wanted to, um, hang on, I get in there. So I just wanted to show you um, the, the, the packaging and the information on these. Okay, you guys can check that out. So we're just gonna open this up. Get the sticker off this thing. For the first time. All right, so that's how they come in a little plastic bag. This is exactly the same as the last one I got. And why these are so good is because they're, you just get them off Amazon. Now, I am going to link in the description below a link to Amazon so you can get one of these. And yes, I do have an Amazon affiliate, um, but it won't cost you any more to do that. And you would be sending a little bit of money my way. Um, they have a couple of adapter things here, like an Allen key and a little back, back screw, but that's, I don't use that part. These are the little clamps. Now, what's good about these is they are a standard camera mount here. And this whole part here can be adjusted. So you can actually angle this however you want and then you can screw that in. Um, the other cool thing too is they are very, very, very well made, I think. And that opens up quite wide. So that's as wide as it will open. Um, and you can get it on a pretty decent thickness thing and obviously it closes right up to close as well. So it will hold on to something pretty thin as well. So that part of it is good. It's got a fairly deep, um, you know, jaw if you like. And also it'll take a, a pole because of that circular sort of clamp on it. It's got a little bit, bit of a rubber or a plastic um, pad inside there. So it grips on nicely. Now the actual small rig clamp thing can be adjusted here and also this part can be so I'm sticking to stuff here this part is on a swivel you can see the little ball now swivel so there's a lot of different you know movements to this and if we just grab the side of this desk here and we just use that as an example okay and I just I think I've just knock something out. So you can see here, I'll just tighten that right up. That's that's lifting the whole desk up. I'm putting all my pressure on that. That is as strong as anything. It's not going anywhere. And I can tighten that even more if I really, really want it to. So do you see what I mean? It's just such a really good product. And for about seven, eight pounds, or about 14, $15 Australian, and maybe about $12 US. $10, $11, $12, somewhere depending on the exchange rate. Um, Allen key is used for some sort of adjustment in here, I guess, probably in there. Uh, looks like an Allen key, but I'm not sure. I actually am not sure where the Allen key goes. Uh, someone will tell us in the description. Um, and that little shoe thing there, you can mount that. Um, Somewhere. I actually don't know. Someone tell us in the description what these parts are used for, because I've never actually used one. This, this bit and this bit. Never actually used one. Actually, I've got about uh, maybe four of these now and sitting around the place. Anyway, um, that's the small rig. So 